is Aaron Micklow, and I'm here with Jake Burns from Stiff Little Fingers. <laughs> Happy to be here with you. I love Stiff Little Fingers. Well, thank you. That's very kind of you. Yeah. So your album, No Going Back, um, topped the charts here in the UK. Yeah. What do you see for the future of Stiff Little Fingers? And are you currently working on anything new? Yeah, we've started uh, writing. Um, the, the, the trouble is, uh, uh, again, the, the kind of the, the album's success took us all a bit by surprise. Mm -hmm. um, so we've been pretty much touring constantly since it came out. And uh, it, it's more a case of trying to find a break in the touring schedule to actually write, you know. Yeah. Because uh, I'm not one of those people that can that can write on tour. I've got friends who can do that, and I'm hugely jealous of it. But you know, I'm not sure that the people who are in the hotel room next to me want to hear me banging away on the guitar at two in the morning when they're trying to sleep. For sure. Um, so yeah, it's it's a question of uh, having the time at home. Uh, yeah. So we have started writing. I think with regards to. The recording side of things, we're hoping to record back end of next year and have the next record out at the start of 2020. That's that's the thinking at the moment. Yeah. But, you know, in between that, there's still a lot of a lot of touring. Obviously, we're we're here to do Rebellion. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going out. I I did a month earlier this year on my own, opening for the Dropkick Murphys and and Flogging Molly. I'm doing the second leg of that in September when I go back across to America. Oh wow. And then the band are touring through Canada for most of November. So, you know, as much as I say, well, then I go home and I put my feet up. And, um, <laughs> no, I don't, you know. And, and also, I, no, I nearly forgot, we've actually also got our, our big sort of homecoming show in Belfast at the end of, of August. And that's with uh, so our friends, the Damned and the Buzzcocks are playing with us that day as well. So that'll be fun. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, the Buzzcocks played um, Rebellion this weekend. They were great. That's right. Yeah, they are. They're, they're still very, very good. Yeah. yeah, it was a fun set. Well, so you mentioned um, the tour with Rancid and the Dropkick Murphys. That mm. was your first solo acoustic tour. Yeah. What was that like? Did you have any struggles not having a band with you? Um, well, I'd kind of done some acoustic stuff before but with other people mm -hmm. um, so the concept of actually playing the songs quietly wasn't new to me what was new to me was of course walking out on the stage on my own that was a bit strange um, but that was I did that last year and that but that, that tour the, the section of that tour I did also had the Bouncing Souls on so when I was going on it was so early in the evening mm -hmm. there weren't a huge number of people in so it wasn't quite as nerve-wracking as as I mentioned I just recently did did it again, this time also with the Murphys, but with Flog and Molly. And that time there wasn't a third band. So sometimes I'd be going on and there would be like six or 7,000 people there. And that's kind of daunting when you've just got the one little stool in the middle of the stage. Yeah. And, and they're all, you know, they're pretty big places, obviously. Yeah. And, you know, it comes to, you know, okay, it's, you're on and somebody shoves you in the back and it's like, <laughs> okay, I'm on. You know? <laughs> um, so that was, that was a bit daunting. But no, in, in general, the audiences were very kind and it was, it was actually a lot of fun to do, you know. Yeah. And I mean, you know, you're amazing. So it's you on a stool is, is more than enough to keep an audience in. Well, I don't know about that. I, I was, I was kind of glad that the other guys were coming on after me. <laughs> no, it was, it was fun. Like I said, most people were very were very kind about it. So. Yeah. Do you think that that's something you'll continue to do more of in the future because this has gone well? Uh, yeah. I mean, I enjoyed it. Uh, I, I think you know, it's one of those things. I mean, we're we're all getting to the stage. You know, Stiff Little Fingers have been around for over forty years now, so none of us are getting any younger. Yeah. And you know, and not that it gets that much harder to do what we do but obviously you know it, it, there comes a point when you start thinking i'm start am i beginning to look a bit foolish here i'm like i'm in i'm over 60 years old am i starting to look a bit foolish jumping up and down and playing an electric guitar no so you know you, you sort of lean then towards well you know maybe maybe you can go down the route that the old blues guys did you know when they got into their their later years and they had you know they would sit on stools with acoustic guitars and tell stories and you know and so you know i could maybe become you know that was actually one of the things was my wife and i were talking about it i said you know maybe in my later years i can become like you know i don't know moaning jake burns or hard <laughs> she said no nah, not really she said you're more complaining so it's okay right, complaining jake burns then that's what i'll be when i get older you know? <laughs> But 
when you were a kid, you saw Rory Gallagher and yeah. he inspired you to play guitar. Yeah. Um, you know, what got you into, what got you your first guitar and what eventually got you into punk rock? Well, like you said, yeah, Rory was definitely the first influence and, and that was, you know, it was, it was one of the, I think I was about 12, 13 when I saw him and I pretty much decided that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, however, I also realized very quickly once I got the first guitar, which I think I got it when I was about, I was 14, I think when I got my first guitar, um, I realized I was never going to be good enough to do, you know, to be the guy on his own at the front, because having just spoken about being the guy on his own, but you know, I was, I was never actually going to be, you know, I was never going to be that guy right out the front. And I, I never really wanted to be, I realized that very early that I wanted to be part of a band. Mm -hmm. I wanted, that was really, you know, where I was happiest. Um, and yet when, when punk happened, I mean, I think because I was quite a precocious kid musically, I mean, my friends were all slightly older than me. So even at, at 12 years old, I was buying Led Zeppelin records yeah. because that's what my friends were listening to. You yeah. know, all, all people of my age at that stage were buying like, you know, T-Rex records and, and, and the glam rock stuff. Yeah. Um, and I, I, you know, I, I was listening to slightly more, you know, not really grown up, but, you know, slightly more sophisticated stuff than that. Um, so again, sort of when punk happened in like 76, 77, I was really bored with all the all of that sort of earlier heavy metal stuff. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I'd, I'd been impressed by all the flash guitar players and all that. But it was just, you know, I, I kind of felt that people were losing sight of the song and they were losing sight of the, the excitement in the thing. Mm -hmm. So when I heard the first punk bands, I was kind of a natural convert. You know, it was like it felt to me like, well, this is exactly what, you know, the music business is needed. It's needed to sort of kick up the backside for some time. And I thought it was just going to be that. I thought it was going to be like a short, sharp shock. And I heard the Ramones, I heard the Pistols, and I heard the Damned. And I thought, this is great. But, you know, I don't really see it lasting more than about six months. But in that six months, hopefully it'll shake the world up a bit. And then I heard The Clash. And uh, when I heard them writing songs about their lives and about the, the, the fact that they had sort of no opportunities, they had no... You know, basically, I mean, even though the No Future slogan was a Sex Pistol slogan, it was very much what The Clash were actually putting into words. Mm -hmm. And that's when I realized, you know, this actually could, this could be, you know, more than than just the, the, the raw excitement of three chords and, and playing it, you know, having fun. Yeah. And, and of course, you know, we grew up in, in Northern Ireland, which at the time was, was pretty much a, in the middle of, a, you know, a lot of civil conflict. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if the Clash thought they had it rough in London, we were like, well, you really ought to come and try living here for a while. So, you know, we reckon we had a lot to write about. And so that was that was kind of where most of the songs or a lot of the songs on the first album came from. And, and then, of course, when that took off, then suddenly it became, OK, I guess this is our job now for a while. And it's been my job for, like I said, 41 years now. So Yeah, and that's amazing. I mean you know, headlining tonight, playing the big stage at Rebellion. Yeah. I mean, so many people have already said how excited they are to see you, myself included. Well, that's kind of you. I mean, it, it, it's a lot of fun to play here. I mean, we've done it a bunch of times and uh, it's always fun to come to. Um, I mean, I, I tend to try and hide myself away until just before we go on. Yeah. Just for the simple reason that there are so many people here that I know that if I was to go down there now, I would end up going to the bar with them and being no state to play by the time midnight rolled around and we were supposed to play. So that's that's actually the only reason I kind of keep myself away until until we go on. Yeah. Of course, afterwards, then I'm like, let's go for a drink. And they're like, no, nah, we're closed now. I'm like, no. You know? but, so, you, you know, you, you, I know that there are a lot of people here that I want to try and at least grab hold of and say a quick hello to. And that's, that's kind of the main fun part of it, this for me. And I think it is for a lot of people, you know, I think... For the people that come here, in a way, the bands are almost secondary. It really is, like I said, it's you get to see people you haven't seen in a while, and it's you know it's, it's just a fun hangout for a weekend, you know. <laughs> So I've seen you play a bunch of times and on stage you've talked about, you know, your battles with depression yeah. and that's something I've struggled with myself and a lot of other people out there. So I think that's really brave of you to bring awareness to that and open up about it um, because it can help other people. But what are some of the things that you do to cope when you're having a bad mental health day? Well, I mean, first of all, I didn't think of it as particularly brave. I mean, I wrote the song just basically as, as a, it was a coping mechanism for me when I wrote it. I basically put, I just put down everything that I felt. It was more to remind myself that, 
you know, you've gotten through this before. There's no reason why you shouldn't get through it again. Yeah. Um, and it became, kind of became a song. Um, with regards to coping mechanisms, I think everybody, everybody has to find their own, really. I mean, you know, I, I, I went to see a therapist and stuff about it. And, um, you know, he was suggesting uh, pills. And I, I really didn't want to take pills. And I know they work for a lot of people. And if they work for you, that's great. I mean, yeah. but the reason I didn't want to take them was because it just kind of felt a bit like, it felt to me a bit like sort of you know if you wake up with a hangover and you go and grab a beer to try and make yourself feel better. Yeah. And I, I didn't feel like I was tackling the problem. I was just postponing it a bit, you know. Yeah. So I thought I'm no, I'm going to try and you know just work my way through this. And bizarrely, the things I found that well, first of all, I threw myself completely into my work, which I think a lot of people do. I think a lot of people yeah. just try and distract themselves to keep busy. Mm -hmm. um, so I I did that and that worked for a while until of course you know my work being sort of mainly touring, you find yourself three thousand miles from home and all alone in a tiny little room like this and, and before you know it you're like oh god yeah. so th yeah. that, that, that wasn't a, a cure all I don't think anything's a cure all the, the other thing surprisingly I find that worked and I say surprisingly because all my life I've been the laziest guy I know um, I hated any sort of physical exertion I hate any sort of physical exercise or whatever and yet bizarrely I find I find buying a bicycle and going right in I lived in, I lived in Chicago close to the lake at the time riding along the lakefront just for a couple of hours and now we've moved so I, I ride through the park mm -hmm. but just that just getting away from my surroundings getting out into the fresh air and actually bizarrely physical exercise gave me I'm not saying it, it sort of gave me a high but it, 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 it concentrated my mind away from yeah and, and I found you know by the time I came home um, I, I felt a lot better, you know, not, doesn't work every time, but it works more times than not. Yeah. Right? Cause it's a chemical thing of, um, the endorphins and you know, it can't help because it takes your mind off of the things that are bothering you sure. too. You know, and everybody told me this about, oh, you know, you should join a gym. I said, my, my idea of hell. No. But no. gyms are oppressive. They have the fluorescent lighting and all the awful people. Yeah, exactly. You know, at least, you know, at least when you're, when you're, you know, cycling along the lake, the, the, the worst that can happen is maybe somebody's walking along eating an ice cream and doesn't see you, you know, it's like, that way, that way. But, you know. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I, I find that that worked. That yeah, worked really well, you know, for sure. I think that's amazing, and I'm I'm with you that you know pills work for some people, but I, you know, when yeah, I have I, my, I would never ever say don't no, don't do it. I mean, yeah, just because I decided not to do it. I mean, if pills work for you, go for it. You know? Yeah, but I whatever think, works, really. You know? I think that there's definitely other ways if if you're able to kind of get yourself out of it. That's better than yeah than taking pills. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk You're to me. You're very welcome. I'm so excited to see you play tonight. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm Jake Burns from Stiff Little Fingers, and you're watching Last Rockers TV.